spring is here at last in the Texas Hill Country. We did have a setback because of the deep freeze. So these flowering trees have not put out their blooms until just the last couple of days. Because we did suffer this setback, I've ended up feeding pollen and sugar water farther into the year than I normally do. And I know some people think that it's not right to supplement the bees with these kinds of artificial foods, but I prefer that to giving them nothing and making them go out and forage on dead plants. For me, the first priority is making sure that my bees stay as healthy as possible. We use a medium-sized PVC pollen feeder that Jerry puts together. And for Christmas this past year, I gave several people a plastic pollen feeder from lifelinebees.com. As you can see, this video is from January. The bees really do take advantage of having the pollen feed feeder available. Once again, I'm standing inside the little limbs of the cedar tree so that the bees pretty much don't see me as an obstacle. They don't like flying through here either. And it's not that they would want to sting me, but just that I would get in their way as they make their beeline back to their hives. And so here is the pollen feeder. There it is. And every once in a while, a bee is buzzing pretty close by. Then, here, on these limbs, you can see the bees landing, and they're covered with pollen. So, they're finding a staging area where they can stop, get themselves organized, stuff all of that pollen down into their pollen sacks on their back legs, and then head back home. And I think that this little kiddo has had about enough of me. Back checking out the pollen feeder, and there's still some pollen in there. I loosened it up this morning, but the bees are not hitting it nearly as hard as they were just three days ago. I do hear one bee showing up. So they are still using it, but in a reduced amount, so I think pretty soon we can stop feeding the artificial pollen. Same day, second verse. My bees are coming in to the pollen feeder with pollen in their pollen sacks. I don't know what is up with that. But I think they're out foraging. They're finding some pollen, but it's not enough. So they're buzzing in here to fill up. That's all I can figure out. So I'm going to keep filling this pollen feeder as long as they're using it as much as they are right now. It's still really early in the morning and we've got a whole lot of traffic here. And I see bees flying into the pollen feeder who already have pollen in their pollen sacks. I guess they're just loading up in there. But in truth, it has almost as much pollen tonight as it did this morning. And that is a good sign that we will not need to keep filling this pollen feeder. Because, <laughs> praise God, there are wildflowers out there now. Somewhere. Other people might think they're weeds, but we know that they're wildflowers. People might be justified in calling dandelions and henbit, as pretty as it is, also known as dead metal, weeds, but they're weeds that can help save the bees. I thought I'd do a check just to see if my flowering plants are about to pop and not yet. Uh, this is a uh, Mexican plum, also known as a wild plum. It's one of the first things to flower. It is March 6th today, maybe March 5th. Anyway, 
Uh, good thing I'm not going in for the senility test today. Anyway, yeah, they are getting closer to being ready, but I know that that big cold snap set all of these trees back. Here's the big tooth maple. It has a long way to go before it's sending out pollen. Let's go over and look at the Mexican buckeye. Mexican buckeye, even farther away from blooming. I've tried to set this up so that we have a series of blooms. First, the flowering quince, and it got shut down because of the freeze that froze the flowers. But soon, we will have a wealth of flowering trees providing pollen and nectar for our bees. The Mexican plum with the fruit coming later in the year, the Mexican buckeye, escarpment cherries, the lowly agarita that the bees love so much, the rosemary. And ours is looking pretty ragged right now but I see it getting a little bit greener every single day. Jerry loves trees, and he grew two Mexican plums from seeds. We planted them both in the yard, and here is one of them. This one gets the most sun, so it blooms first. Just a couple of days ago, there were only a few promising-looking buds, but now... We are getting really nice blossoms. Soon this thing will be bursting with these lovely whitish, pinkish flowers. And the fragrance is already starting to fill the whole area. And pretty soon the bees will be catching that fragrance and they'll be zeroing in on these plum flowers. I am so excited. Come on, bees. And here we are two days later. Sure enough, it's a windy and rather coolish day, but the bees have found these plum blossoms, Mexican plum blossoms. And they are busy, busy working them. And I am really happy to see it. I thought you'd have to roll in it, whatever it is. <laughs> You have a good startle reflex, which I'm pretty sure is an important survival instinct. <laughs> Hear the bees? They are all over this red bud. All over. And most of these are the native honeybees. They're the native bees, they're not honeybees. But yes, we've got our honeybees up there too. What a difference three days makes. It is Monday, March 15th, one day later. The red bud is way more in bloom. And the bee 
Indians are having a fine time. No, we didn't forget about you. We know you need to come check on the bees too. Yeah, yeah, come on. Let's check them out together, shall we? Mm -hmm. I know, they're so much fun, aren't they? Yes, they are. And the trusty pollen feeder is empty and completely abandoned. Time to take it down until the dearth. But Jerry told me that we were a little bit too slow taking down this other pollen feeder because it has a bird's nest in it. So this one will have to stay out until the baby birds fly away. How can we end the day without conquering one more tree? Do you know what you're doing up there? Are you going to jump? I wish I could catch you on the way up because it's pretty funny to watch how fast you can scale a tree. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. It's always quicker to get up than it is to get down, which seems anti-intuitive to me. Way to go. Are you ready to go in? Hmm? Let's go. Come on. Let's go in. 